I'm Dr. Anna Steffen, and I'm a psychiatrist at Mankato Clinic. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in neuroscience at the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, and I ended up going to medical school um, at the U of M as well. I completed my residency in general psychiatry at UNC Chapel Hill, and I enjoy working with psychiatric patients with um, all diagnoses, but I do have particular areas of interest, including perinatal psychiatry and also first episode psychosis. The role of a psychiatrist in treating mental illness um, oftentimes comes down to medication management. Um, but in other ways, we are oftentimes a hub to help patients connect to other modalities that might help with their mental illness, like psychotherapy, case management, and things like that. Um, as an MD, we're trained to you know, look at the whole patient, look at all of their medical conditions, how they might be influencing mental health, and also you know, how will the medications that we're prescribing affect this patient's general health as well? So uh, telehealth, particularly telepsychiatry, makes a lot of sense because it allows patients to easily get to their appointments because they can do it from home. Um, it allows closer follow-up and it also helps patients who are struggling with motivation, depression, get the treatment they need. Oftentimes when people are struggling with mental illness, getting up, getting to a doctor's office, things like that can feel very overwhelming. Uh, and telepsychiatry takes a lot of those barriers away. The other thing I like about telepsych is it gives patients in rural areas access to doctors they wouldn't otherwise be able to see. So, um, since COVID, uh, telepsychiatry in particular has exploded and it has, you know, opened up care to people who didn't have it before. Um, another reason I like it is just for some of my patient populations, like um, young mothers with little kids, um, sometimes, you know, getting to getting a babysitter, uh, finding someone to watch your kids, getting a ride to the office, all of those things can be huge barriers to people getting care. And when you take transportation, when you take childcare out of the equation there, people are able to get to their appointments much more easily. And that's, you know, that's a huge thing. So I do like to work with women uh, in the perinatal period and perimenopausal periods of their life. Um, there's a lot of new research out there about how best to treat women during those periods of life. And there are also periods where women experience a lot of stressors and a lot of mental illness related to hormonal changes. So, you know, as a young mother myself, I'm aware of all the stresses that occur, you know, with having a baby, but adding on postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, OCD symptoms, even mania and psychosis, that can have a huge impact on a woman's life and her baby, as well as the whole family. And so making sure that, you know, we're finding individuals who might be more likely to have issues in the peripartum uh, time period and making sure they're followed very closely, as well as getting new moms who might not have had mental health issues in the past who are now experiencing that, getting them appropriate evidence-based treatment right away so that they can get better, they can bond with their baby, and they can get on with the already difficult uh, task of being a mother. So one area where I have particular interest is treating patients who are experiencing their first episode of mania or psychosis, um, and oftentimes that leads to a diagnosis of bipolar or schizophrenia. Um, those are illnesses that often affect young people, generally you know, late adolescence, early 20s, um, right when people are kind of leaving, leaving the nest, starting to um, figure out how to be adults. And having an illness like that hit at such an important time 
really means that that individual needs a lot of support. Um, and so I like working with patients and their oftentimes parents um, in navigating the diagnosis, understanding, you know, how these are chronic illnesses, understanding how to, you know, treat the illness while still making sure that somebody feels like themselves, doesn't feel like they're over medicated. Um, it can be a, a really devastating diagnosis for patients and for families. And another, uh, another issue with those illnesses is insight is oftentimes lacking. That's a hallmark of those illnesses. And so sometimes you'll have patients who don't really understand, don't believe that they're sick. And you have parents, family members who are trying to navigate a patient's autonomy, but also being supportive and making sure that they're getting the mental health care they need. Um, and that's a tricky, sticky situation. And so helping to support the patient, helping to support the families to make sure that that patient is set up for success is really important to me. Back in the day when I didn't have two children, I had hobbies and interests. Nowadays, um, they take up most of my time, I'd say, but uh, I still like to find time to read, uh, work on crafts. Uh, I like doing cross stitching. Uh, although I haven't finished my my current project, it's still it's a Christmas uh, <laughs> a Christmas themed uh, project. So um, it's summer right now. So we'll see if that ever gets done. Um, and I'm spending time with my family um, right now. This period of life is really you know just been about taking care of the little ones. Um, kind of maintaining household and continuing my career.